How many of us, we pull out our phone, we want to post to social media, but you just can't figure out what to post. You can't come up with a caption. You have no idea what photo. Well, we turn to our friend, the fabulous Natalie Zafat. She is a social media expert. Natalie, I swear this is the hardest part. Some days it's like, oh, I really need to post. It's been a while, but where do I start? Jenny, the good news is you are not alone. This is a very common question I get. I'm not even kidding. A lot of people have been asking me about what do I post about on social media? Um, mm -hmm. Even people who love scrolling still feel the doomsday of what should I be posting? Um, and so hopefully today we help with that exact answer. It's so funny that you say doomsday because it literally has become like something to check off the list at times. Like, oh my gosh, I've got to promote this or that. And you know, so that's where I think you're really good at when I follow your social media, you are so clever and so funny in your captions. How do you come up with it? That is really kind. Um, I think that there's a sort of golden rule for social media. If you can be funny, create content that is beautiful or inspirational. So those three buckets uh, or okay. more than one of those three buckets, you are going to be successful. Um, and when you think about funny, it makes sense, right? We all love being entertained on social media, seeing memes that make us laugh, captions that make us laugh. When it comes to being beautiful, that could be you or it could be a gorgeous photo you took or a travel destination you're really excited about. And when it comes to inspiration, think of someone going through a fitness journey or something that you yourself would enjoy following along with. Um, if you're going to enjoy it, the odds are somebody else may also. And everybody's following someone for a reason or a, the business for a reason. They want to either be entertained, like you said, or they want to relate to that business or person. Totally. Uh, relatability is a huge part of this. I often tell people if you can find a personal anecdote or story to share from your actual life, um, you are going to find that people find you authentic and keep following you for that reason. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Natalie, this next one, find your niche. I think there's oftentimes you're following something and you're like, wait a second, is this, am I following a political company or is this actually this company? Right? <laughs> Yeah, it's tempting. A lot of people think that they need to be everything to everyone at all times. And I often tell my clients that's simply not true. Um, if you are someone who deeply understands tennis or gardening or even Hell's Kitchen, uh, pick your niche and really focus on it. Give people uh, information about a topic that they may not be able to find otherwise online. Well, and it's true, relatable to the shows that we're all watching. You know, if it's a hot topic, people are watching it. It's probably a good way to get people looking at your stuff as well. Absolutely. Don't feel like it's too narrow just because it's one show um, or maybe one sport or one vertical. Um, people are really on social media to learn and to find people who sort of sit at their lunch table and care about the things they care about. So be thoughtful. Be, be, be sure to focus on something that you love and you'll find somebody who agrees and also is interested in it. Some of my best life hacks I have learned on social media. The avocado one. Oh, Natalie, mind blown right there. <laughs> So let's talk, keep a calendar and that will help you know when to post and what to post. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't think anyone among us is immune to writer's block and social media is no exception. So when you wake up in the morning and it's time to post, a lot of people feel that stress and that anxiety of, I don't know what to share. Having a content calendar, something as simple as a Google spreadsheet or an Excel spreadsheet, I happen to keep one, uh, to just kind of pre-plan, throw photos in there, captions you think of. And that way, when you're ready to post a couple times a week, you go into the calendar and you have a bunch of ideas ready for you. Smart. I really, really like that one. So then when it comes to the caption, you know, some people or businesses I follow use an excessive amount of emojis. Hmm. Other people use none. What's the, what's the right way to do that? Is there a right way? Yeah, I think this is going to be subjective. So if you are in an overly professional environment or you're perhaps interacting with your boss or colleagues on LinkedIn, I would tell you, maybe you don't need to incorporate emojis into right. that. But if you're in a creative industry uh, or you're interacting with mostly friends and family, uh, emojis are a really nice way to add some levity and humor to a caption, especially when there's no word equivalent for that emoji. And I think about the upside down smiley face that I use 10 times a day. That's a great <laughs> example of something that just can't be captured in words. I need to use that one more often. It's a good one. So it's one of my favorite things to do when there are no words, you just use the emoji. So Natalie, you always have such great tips. And if people either want to talk to you more, follow you, or even hire you, how can they get in touch? Thank you for that compliment. Um, I am on social media, no surprise there, under my name, which is Natalie Safad on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Fantastic. We will see you next month. Thanks so much for having me.